Welcome back. Now, earlier today, CBS News reported that Vice President Kamala Harris has attracted the support of enough Democratic delegates to become the party's nominee for president. A survey by the Associated Press said Harris had received the endorsement of close to 2,000 delegates needed to win the nomination in the first round of voting. Now, this comes, of course, 48 hours after Joe Biden had announced that he will be stepping down from the presidential race. Uh, a lot of it, a lot of the discussion, of course, is down to many people who had advised him to maybe step down, given a disastrous debate that he had with another presidential nominee, that is Donald Trump. Joining us, I'd like to welcome Dr. Bob Uwekesa, who is the director of the Wits University African Center for the Study of the United States. Dr. Uwekesa, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much and looking forward. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Dr. Wekesa, let's start off, of course, with that uh, debate that happened in June. That was kind of like the seal of uh, approval for Joe Biden to say, well, enough is enough, because it was really an embarrassing moment for him on that day, wasn't it? No, exactly so. Um, in fact, it was just uh, a culmination of concerns about his age that had been building up over the months. Uh, even though he had been endorsed as the nominee of the party, mm -hmm. there had been whispers uh, around uh, his age, uh, you know, turning out to be the oldest uh, president in office and was going to be even far older than uh, stretching that record, in fact. Uh, in fact, these issues were even raised in the 2019 campaign. Mm. Um, so the moment he, he, he flipped, the moment uh, he demonstrated uh, some incapacities uh, cognitively during um, that debate with Trump, uh, it was uh, game over. Mm. I think now his opponents had, uh, you know, kind of a step back from uh, criticizing him because of his incumbency or giving him a chance. So an opportunity to shove in, to come in more strongly and, uh, you know, demand that uh, he resigns. And of course, he stayed adamant, mm. he was defiant until the very last minute. In fact, until there was a groundswell of... Uh, opposition to his uh, continuation of the campaign. Mm. Doctor, I, I want to speak on Kamala Harris. Of course, she enters the race. Uh, there's a history to that, of course. Uh, Hillary Clinton was the last female candidate for that presidency job, and of course, she lost out to Donald Trump. Kamala Harris, she's been there with Joe Biden. She supported Biden through his uh, term. Uh, her in the race, she's gotten that democratic support. What would she bring that could be potentially different to Joe Biden, uh, of course, uh, besides the age gap? But from a democratic perspective, is there something different that she could bring, maybe that could be different to what you had with Barack Obama or even Bill Clinton, for example? No, I think she brings in a couple of uh, possibilities for the Democratic Party. One, is uh, her multiracial nature. Uh, her mother was uh, Indian, so she is uh, considered uh, Asian American. Her dad, who is a professor at Stanford University, is African American with Jamaican roots. And therefore, that gives her the African American heritage. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, you know the, the, the US being a country of multiracial, diasporic communities. You know, we have uh, Latinos, uh, you know, Americans of uh, Chinese or Indian or Vietnamese uh, heritage, lots of uh, immigrants from the African continent, from Europe, from just around the world. Mm. Uh, her story speaks to them in uh, many ways. So that, I think, brings in a pool of uh, voters outside of the traditional vote base of uh, 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 white uh, Americans or uh, European Americans, if you wish. I think that's one major, you know, point that uh, she starts from almost uh, the same respect as Obama to some extent, although not, although in fact, in fact, much wider because uh, Obama was just considered African American, but uh, she has both, uh, you know, Indian, therefore Asian uh, lineage as well as Africa, uh, which is why I think she's being referred to as first black. Uh, uh, a woman uh, presidential candidate, which Clinton didn't quite have. The second thing we, are, we must remember that uh, Clinton 
uh, you know, Hillary Clinton was uh, campaigning in 2016 after 10 years of the Barack Obama administration. And usually in American politics, uh, the populace or the electorate gets tired of one party, at least after 10 years. Uh, they, they want change to see what else can happen. Uh, fresh ideas. And I think that's why Trump, with his uh, being comparative, uh, being uh, no holds bad, seemed to have an advantage in 2016, even though uh, Hillary Clinton will have uh, promised bringing on the women vote. But at least for now, um, you know, Kamala brings in the gender perspective, uh, a woman at a time when um, there are quite some serious issues around uh, reproductive uh, health issues, sex mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, women issues, mm -hmm. issues to do with abortion, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, the Republican Party under Trump and, uh, and, and other big wigs within the party are anti-abortion, uh, whereas Democrats uh, support that. Many women kind of seem inclined towards uh, that, uh, you know, whole idea of uh, having rights over their bodies and things like that. So, I mean, this is the nature of uh, American politics. Mm. And therefore, you, you imagine that she will actually also attract quite some major uh, gender-based uh, women vote. Mm. I think, lastly, uh, one can actually look at uh, the uh, moderates in, within the party, although she is considered liberal, but clearly she's shifting even from just her early speeches towards the center. There are for, uh, rather than being uh, in extreme left, and, you know, getting into a centrist position will actually appeal to moderates, which will then, uh, you know, steal the vote from uh, those who are inclined towards Trump, thinking that uh, the Democratic Party had swung too far to the left. So I'll say those are the kinds of, uh, in terms of real numbers, at the ballot, uh, this is what you will bring on board. Dr. Wekesa, the talk is, is that Trump may not be great for Africa. Uh, we know during his term as president, the relationship with the continent was really lopsided. It was really something where, you know, the African leaders really struggled to communicate with him. Some may say this could be different with, uh, with Harris, given that, of course, there is a sense of African roots within it. No, no, certainly. I think there's no question about it. Uh, Trump, you start, in fact, Trump will uh, be bad for Africa. Africa, but not just Africa, mm. uh, for the rest of the world, for the Chinese, for the Indians, mm. for the Europeans, based on the fact that I think Trump has never abandoned the idea of make America great again. In fact, that's the campaign branding up to this point in time. And that is uh, based on the ideology of uh, America remaining the superpower, the only superpower, a great power, a far, uh, you, know, you know, heads and shoulders above the rest of the world. Uh, Africa, therefore, falls far below the radar uh, on the pecking order, on the American agenda. I think uh, the battle for Trump would be to try and negotiate with the Chinese or, you know, uh, start a trade war as he did with them uh, to demand that Europeans uh, pay their dues within the national, I mean, uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, you know, to, to kind of go soft on uh, Russia and mm. Ukraine. In those circumstances, Africa does not feature much. Mm. So Kamala Harris would then portend much better, if nothing else, because um, the, the Trump will be quite on the extreme side in terms of uh, neglecting relations with the African continent. But even more important, apart from her roots, the fact is that Kamala Harris is being seen as carrying the legacy of Biden. Biden did quite well on the African front. For instance, um, under the Biden administration, the first Africa-US strategy was launched here in South Africa in August 2022, the last one having been launched by Obama in 2014. In 2022, Obama did the US-Africa Leader Summit, becoming one of the first in almost a decade. Mm. And in the, in the months that have uh, passed, you know, the, the president has come up, you know, President Biden has come up with a, you know, a series of policies through USAID, for example. He has established the President's Advisory Council on uh, African Diaspora Engagement. He has appointed the highest number of uh, African Americans who have an affinity with the continent into key positions. I think we've seen a lot of uh, 
uh, you know, uh, US officials, uh, you know, visit the continent and try to chart relations and so forth. Uh, so, so I think uh, under Kamala Harris, if you continued with, uh, uh, you know, the legacy of uh, Biden, it will occur far better to, for the continent, which does not necessarily translate to uh, taking care of our African interests entirely. Yeah, of course, a big question will be with regards to uh, Goa. Unfortunately, Dog Wekesa, we are out of time. Thank you so much for joining us here on News in Focus on Hilal TV. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. That's and all the best. That's uh, Dr. Bob Wekesa, the director of the Wits University African Center for the study of the United States. Yeah, well, three, w three months and maybe a week and a half till that major elections happens. In the United States of America, the world will definitely be watching on so many fronts and on so many topics with regards to that. Well, that's all we have for you here on News in Focus. We will be back, though, on Thursday with tomorrow being talking point. From myself, Ross Vidal, the rest of the team in Johannesburg, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.